In the 1970s, a man named Phil Tippett started his career in cinema. He built some miniatures for a film called The Crater Lake Monster, but was uncredited in this role. His first on-screen credit was for a little movie, you might not have heard of it, called Tippett's career has spanned across the Star Wars original trilogy, Robocops 1 and 2, Starship Troopers, and Jurassic Park. And also the Twilight Saga, but we'll leave that out for now. He helped invent a new animation technique called Go Motion Animation at Lucasfilm ILM, which better simulated movement in stop motion animation. This man has had his hands in some of the most technically impressive productions of the past half century. And all that time, he was working on something. You see, in 1987, the year Robocop came out, Tippett began producing a personal project of his. He built sets and figures, and he filled notebooks with sketches and storyboards. But about this time, a different kind of technology began to come into vogue in Hollywood. Steven Spielberg wanted to bring the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park to life using computer imagery. Phil saw this and believed that his skill with stop-motion animation was being outmoded, and pivoted to computer effects in order to keep Tippett's studio afloat. Combined with the fact that his studio was getting busier and busier, his pet project didn't seem viable any longer, and so he shuttered it for two decades. Until the early 2010s, when animators at Tippett Studio found these old elements sitting where he'd left them. They found the scenes he had already shot, and convinced him to pick up the project again. And so, he did. After years of work on the weekends, and a big Kickstarter campaign, the production was finally completed in 2020, 33 years of work on a project fueled purely by passion. And that project? <laughs> Mad God is currently streaming on Shudder, and recently had a limited theatrical run that I was lucky enough to catch. And let me tell you, I've never seen anything quite like this before. I feel like I could list a dozen partial comparisons, Dark Crystal meets Fury Road and Doom? Nine, but with a hard R edge, but really it's just cut from a different cloth altogether. The story involves this traveler, formerly named the Assassin, who descends into this hellish world in a diving bell. He carries only a crumbling map and a briefcase set with a bomb. His journey leads him past horror after horror, abominations begetting abominations, a massive factory city where drones are forged to work and then die. His mission is interrupted when he himself is caught and tortured for the amusement of a theater audience. But within his chest cavity, the surgeon finds a child. The child is taken by the nurse to what is only described as a floating creature, which looks like a floating plague doctor wearing a sombrero with bones and beads and feathers dangling from it. The creature then takes it to an alchemist, who then refines the child into a powder that creates another universe, only for that one to similarly end up a hellish nightmare. And it's about this moment that the assassin's bomb, lying where he left it, detonates. Now the obvious place to start is with the visuals. Mad God is moody and atmospheric, there is never not something interesting on the screen. Things are shot from interesting angles, like from inside containers, making sure it always feels dynamic. While the stop motion is clearly the star of the show, the film also has little touches of computer imagery and digital compositing that create eerie effects. One scene I particularly noted was the torture scene involving a surgeon and a nurse, both played by live actors. And yet, the way that they move, the way that it's edited, harkens back to the janky motion of Ray Harryhausen's classic effects. It makes them feel inhuman, even less human than the clearly non-human characters. A clever balance is struck here. The world is so alien, and yet it's still accessible enough that we can recognize what is going on. The film is a masterclass in character design, because even when I had no idea what I was looking at, I knew how to feel about it without any words being said. The film is a masterclass in environment design. Long narratives can be unspooled simply from the backgrounds. Every aspect of Mad God brims with life, marrying endless creativity with a remarkable display of craftsmanship. But the question is, for what? What does Mad God ultimately mean? Well, the movie seems to center around two concepts, creation and destruction. The opening of the movie comes with a quote from Leviticus chapter 26. I will lay your cities in ruin and make your sanctuaries desolate, and I will not savor your pleasing odors. 
I will make the land desolate, so that your enemies who settle in it shall be appalled by it. And you I will scatter among the nations, and I will unsheathe the sword against you. It evokes a recurring pattern in the Old Testament. The world is created, it is corrupted, it is destroyed and made new only to be corrupted once again. The Hebrews are rescued from Egypt only to immediately turn their backs on Moses and Yahweh, and they suffer dramatic retribution as a result. It appears an Aeonian cycle where sin and suffering are inescapable, and Mad God takes a very nihilistic view of this. Drones are mass manufactured to labor and suffer ignoble deaths. The alchemist keeps a terrarium that he unleashes a spider monster into when he wills it, seemingly just for his own amusement. The floating creature creates an entire new universe, and it grows and prospers only to devolve into the same apocalyptic nightmare that they themselves live in. It's at once a gorgeous and horrendous ode to the capricious and brutal nature of the universe. The endless cycle of cruel creation and looming destruction, which can only be overseen by a truly mad god. <laughs>